Hello, this is a short snippet lesson introducing you to the concept of pipes in R. I was about to send you off into the next course and then we realized, whoops, you don't know how to use pipes yet. So this is a bit of an emergency lesson we're trying to record very quickly so that you can get introduced to the concept of pipes. I will start by copying and pasting the line uh, that installs the package Pacman if you don't have it. This is something you can copy and paste from your previous scripts. And now we can actually um, load some additional packages using Pacman. Remember that Pacman is a package manager. So I'm going to type Pacman pload. Okay, Pacman pload. And then the packages we're going to use are Tidyverse. Remember that Tidyverse is a meta package. It's a suite of packages. And in particular, we need it for the pipe. So Tidyverse is actually going to give us the pipe. Then we're going to use the package GT, which gives us some cool tables. I think you have seen this in a previous lesson. And we're going to use also the package Outbreaks, where we're going to get some important uh, data sets. So we run those, and that will load those necessary packages. Now let's look at the data we're actually going to be working with in uh, R. So the data set is called Quakes. This is our first example. So Quakes, if we uh, take a look at the Quakes data set, it's built into R, so you don't actually have to load any package. You can just uh, look at the Quakes data set. And it has the following columns, lat for latitude, long for longitude, the depth, this is how deep the earthquake came from, the magnitude, I think that's the Richter scale, and then the number of uh, stations that recorded that earthquake. And we have the following task um, from this data set. We would like to show the top five earthquakes in this data set. Top five earthquakes uh, by magnitude. Now let's see how we would do this based on what we have learned so far. So far, you have learned the arrange function. So we could arrange this data set in order of magnitude. Let's try that now. We do arrange. And then the first argument for uh, the arrange function is the data. So we put the data in there. OK, comma. And then the, the column we want to arrange by. In this case, that's going to be magnitude. So if I run that, this will give me an arranged data set. But as you can see, it's arranged in a ascending order of magnitude. So the smallest magnitudes are at the top. So we want to flip that. We can just put a negative here, and that will give us the uh, descending order. So now we have arranged in increasing order of magnitude here. Sorry, in decreasing order. And we have the top five um, earthquakes uh, shown. But uh, what we would like to do now is instead of printing the whole table, we would like to only just look at the top five. And to do that, remember the head function that we had taught you. So if you do head quakes, all right, that will give you the first uh, six rows of the quakes data set. And if you do head quakes comma n equals five, that will give you the first five rows. So now what we would like to do is run the head function on this arranged quakes data set, on the arranged quakes data set. And if we run it on the arranged quakes data set, we will get the top five rows, all right, by magnitude. So how do we do this? The way you would typically do this, if you haven't learned about pipes, is you would assign the output here to a new object, and you might call it something like arranged data. And then instead of taking the head of the raw quakes, we would take the head of the arranged data. I hope you're typing this along with me, because if you're not, you will be unlikely to understand everything. So now that I've uh, assigned that, I can run this head on arranged data, and I can see the top five quakes. So this is what I would call um, option one for how to achieve this task. Now it is clear, but I would say it's a bit long. There's lots of typing that we had to do to achieve this uh, simple task. Now here's what option two is uh, for this task. Option two is a not so clear option, and it involves a function nesting, which I have shown taught you about function nesting. And so what we could do there is we take this line arrange quakes mag, and we just wrap uh, the output in the head function. So remember, again, the output of this is this arranged data set. Okay. And if we just wrap that in head, that will essentially mean take the head of this arranged data set. Okay, but we only want five rows. So we can now put a comma here. So we can just put here n equals five, and that will achieve the same, the same output. But I would say this is not so clear. In particular, when you ha start to have many functions, 
this will become even less clear. So here we only have two functions, so you could see it's, it's pretty clear. But let's look now at option three, which is uh, using pipes. So notice that if we type out these two functions here, arrange quakes, and then let's take this one here, uh, the head of arranged data. Um, in fact, I'm going to change this from arranged data to quakes. Notice that for these two lines here, the very first argument for the two functions is the quakes data set. So this gives us an idea, right? What if we could just uh, take this quakes data set, let's say we put it up here on the top, okay? And then delete it from each of those uh, functions, from the internals of the functions. What if we had a way to just take this thing and plug it in uh, this space here, okay? Then take the output of all of this and plug it in this space here. So some way to take this and make it the first argument of this function, then take this and make it the first argument of the head function. And indeed, we do have a way to do that. And it's called a, it's called a pipe. So the way you type a pipe is you type a, a percent sign greater than and then percent sign. It's a bit painful to type. So instead of typing that manually, there's a shortcut in our studio. And that is shift command M, which I just pressed. Or if you are on Windows, I think it should be shift control M. Okay, so we just write that. And then now we can get rid of this space here. We put another pipe, okay? And uh, we get rid of that space there. And if we run those uh, those lines, we can just uh, put our cursor anywhere and run those lines. We can see that we have done the following. We took the Quake data set, we arranged it in descending order of magnitude, and then we took the first five rows. We can read uh, this this pipe as meaning as meaning and then and then take the this line and then let's say plug this output as the first argument of the next line or of the function of the function on the next line okay that's kind of a mouthful but you can really just think of it as and then so take the quakes data set and then arrange in descending order of magnitude and then take the head uh, with the first five rows, okay? One small thing about the pipe is technically after you have um, typed the pipe, if you press an enter on RStudio, it'll give you an indentation. So generally we type this with an indentation, okay? Another um, way to write this, instead of putting the quakes up there alone, you could also just do arrange quakes uh, in descending order of magnitude, pipe, head, and equals five. So those are two options. All right, now here is a practice question for you. Okay, I would like you to try the following. So take, show the four deepest quakes, okay? Then pass the output of that to GT. Oh, I forgot about GT. Now that we have the uh, the, the top five rows of the this quakes data set, we may want to pass it into a nice looking table. Maybe you are working in R Markdown. You pass it into a nice looking table for your audience to see. In order to do that, we can just type a pipe here and pass it into the GT function from the GT package. I think I've shown you this before. GT has a, a function called GT. Okay, you can see it there. And if you pass it, if you pass all of this stuff into GT, you will get a nice looking table like that, which if you're working in R Markdown will get printed in your document. Uh, technically, you can just write you can run GT on a single um, data set. You can type, for example, GT Iris. Or what I mean is you can run GT on a data set simply like that. Okay. Or you could put it at the end of a pipe chain here. So now we have these three functions in a nice pipe chain, and it's easy to see what they're doing. Let's put it here as well, GT. Okay, so now back to your practice question. I want you to show the, f the four deepest quakes that is going to be using the depth column. Um, and then pass the output to GT. So pause the video and uh, think of how you would do that. And in three seconds, I will come back, but make sure you pause the video and think for yourself. Okay, I'm assuming you have now paused the video and tried that. So now I'm going to show you how to do it. So you take the Quakes data set. We're going to pipe that into an arrange call and arrange in descending order of depth, okay? And now we can see, if we scroll to the top of this big data set, that we have the deepest 
um, earthquakes at the top. Okay, and we want to show the top four of those. So we do another pipe head n equals four. Okay, and then we want to pass that into a nice looking table with GT. So I pass that into GT and we can see what that looks like there. Very nice. Let's look at one more example of piping with a new data set, just so you, we make sure you have this fully down. So in the second data set we're going to use is called a, is, a, is data from a varicella simulation. Varicella is an infectious disease. This data set comes from the, uh, the outbreaks package. Okay, so once you load outbreaks, you will have the following data set in your environment, varicella sim Berlin. And this data set is quite large with many rows and it's a bit hard to to get a sense of what's going on here as you can see. Uh, there's a nice function that we haven't showed you yet which is called as tibble and it also comes from the tidyverse and what we can do is we can say as tibble varicella sim Berlin and what this does is it prints the table in a nicer way. It prints the data frame in a nicer way. As we can see now it's easier to see the number of rows, the number of columns. We can see what each of the variable names is fairly easily. Some of them are summarized or shortened here, and you can look below and see what the full names are. So it's a nicer way to print a data frame. So generally in R, uh, when, when things are printed like this, uh, I don't like to work with objects that are printed like this, so I like to print them as tibbles. All right? So that's a nice tip for you, which you're going to see in later lessons. Now our task using this uh, this Tibo varicella is the following. We're going to try to show the names of the five youngest people in the data and pass to GT. Okay, so this, this isn't practice for you yet. Uh, this will do together, so just type along with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my varicella sim Berlin data, and because I don't like how it prints, I first convert it to a Tibo. Okay, a Tibo. All right, and Next, I'm going to want to arrange in order of age, and that will get me the youngest people at the top. So now we can see the five youngest people all have ages of zero. That is very convenient. And we want to uh, just take the top five here. So head n equals five. And uh, the last thing we, we want to do is show just the names of these young people. So here we have so many columns and it's a bit confusing. We only want to see their names. To do that, there's a simple function also coming from the tidyverse, which we haven't taught you yet. So I'll just quickly show you what it is. It's called the uh, the select function, select. So select basically helps you uh, select columns. So if you have, for example, the women data set, this is another built in R data set. It's a very simple data set. And we want to select from that data set, the height column, we can just type select women height and run that. Okay. If we want to select the weight column, we can type select women weight and run that. If you want to select both the height and the weight, you can do that. All right. And we can use this in the pipe notation as well. So we can do women pipe select weight. And we get that. Typically, you would want to put this on the next line and indent it. Okay. Or you can do women select uh, weight height. Hopefully, this makes sense what a select function does. So now let's look at how we can add this to the pipe chain just to show the names of these youngest people. So I put a, a pipe here, select, and we just want to see their first name, okay, and their last name. And since we're looking at their the, the youngness of this population, it might make sense to include also the age. So now we have this nice table uh, for us there. And as a last step, we may want to pipe that into GT. So pipe that into GT. And we will get now a nicely printed table that shows these data. Now notice how beautiful this code is and how easy it is to read and to understand. It reads kind of like an English sentence. Take the varicella in Berlin, then make it into a nice table, then arrange in order of age, then take the top five rows, then select the following columns, then pass it to GT. How beautiful. The alternative to this, that is either this Thing where you assign intermediate objects would be quite long and painful in this case where we have five functions or even this option where we function nest would be very painful uh, where we have five functions here so hopefully you appreciate now the beauty of pipes uh, as, a, as, as a closing section let's give you one more practice question so the practice question I'm going to give you now is the following show the sex of the four oldest people whoops sex of the four 
oldest people, I've forgotten how to type, in the uh, in the data, in this varicella sim Berlin data. So again, pause the video. I'll give you uh, three seconds to pause, then I'll show you the solution. Okay, I'm assuming you're paused, so now let's go through it. So I'll just copy this line here. Uh, whoops, varicella sim Berlin, pipe first into as table. Even though this is not really necessary, it helps us see the remaining steps. Then we want the four oldest people in the data. So pipe into a range. And instead of just age, which would give us the youngest people at the top, we can do a range negative age. So now we have the oldest people. We wanted the top four. So we do head n equals four. And then uh, what else do we want? Let's pass that to GT. Or let's see, it says show the sex. We only want to show the sex. So instead of... Uh, uh, just um, stopping at head before we pass to GT, we should also put a select function there. So select the sex and maybe also the age since we're showing them in terms of their oldness. Okay. And then now we can pass this finally to the GT function to get the beautiful output. Okay. So that ladies and gentlemen is how you use the pipe function. Technically, the pipe function comes from the uh, Magritte package. Magritte, Magritte, I think it's a French word. But um, the tidyverse has imported that particular um, function into the tidyverse. So you don't have to load Magritte, you can just load tidyverse. A very final thing to talk about maybe is the base pipe. So ever since I believe R4.1, uh, the, the R version 4.1, there's actually been introduced a base pipe which works similar to this one that comes from the tidyverse slash Magritte. And the base pipe is actually a bit uh, nicer looking, but um, it has some features which I don't quite like. So I haven't switched over to the um, base pipe. And I think most people haven't switched over. But here is the base pipe. It is a, um, a horizontal bar and then a greater than sign. So instead of this percent, we have this. And it works mostly the same way as the pipe we've been using so far. There are a few uh, differences that make me prefer the old pipe. But if you want, you can use this one. All right, so if we run that, it gives us the same output. It's just basically the same thing. All right, so that's the base pipe. And that is the end of this lesson. I wish you the very best of luck. And uh, hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye bye. For more resources, visit our website, where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes, and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.